All right, we are 11 April 2024. We're coming up eight days out from the Bitcoin halving. What we are looking at right now is the nice hash, nice hash Bitcoin halving countdown clock. Um, yeah, so that is the next big event following the ETF approvals, which have gone wonky, wonkers. Is that, is that a word, wonkers? Ever since the ETFs got approved, Lots and lots of money has flowed in to these uh, uh, these brokerage houses that are doing these ETFs uh, from BlackRock to Vanguard to Fidelity. The worst one is Grayscale. Those people are idiots. I think they um, they had a lot of influx of money into their Bitcoin ETF, and now people are leaving it because I think of fees. I think a lot of fees. This is last week when Bitcoin was 73K and then all of a sudden, boom, dips down to 65K. And uh, one of the reasons I think, other than the government moving Bitcoin around, was the Grayscale people unloaded out of their ETF because their fees are way too high. And then uh, Grayscale had them then dump their Bitcoin, I guess is what happened in the middle of the night at 1 a.m. Eastern time. And that caused Bitcoin to kind of correct. That's what I read. Is that the truth? Nobody knows. I don't know what the hell goes on with half this stuff anyway. I'm still trying to figure out what makes it go up, what makes it go down, what makes it go sideways, and what makes it uh, do nothing at all. It's really, I'm being honest, I'm going to be so honest here. I just really think it's gambling at this point um, with a little bit of supply demand to boot, if that's a word, to boot. So uh, when this halving occurs, um, the mining profits will be cut. And those Bitcoin miners that are out there, a lot of them are going to fall off, apparently, because um, if you look at these miners that actually mine Bitcoin, the ones that do not do it efficiently will not be around after the halving. They're going to they're going to whittle away because they won't be able to compete with the rewards. Uh, yeah. So one of those. Let's jump into that. Where are we at right now? Let's just another random conscious stream. They seem to be the best streams. Uh, where in the heck is my page? All right, TradingView is my friend. I like TradingView. I also like the Coinbase Advanced uh, TradingView window as well. And they have the orders, order book, which is annoying at times. I like to maybe, I, there's got to be a way to turn it off on Coinbase Advanced. But uh, having said that, with uh, TradingView, you can go in and put your watch list. And if you want to, you can look at my watch list. I don't care. Uh, let's see, what do I got on my watch list? Well, first of all, we're at 71,127 Bitcoin. It was down to, oh my God, what was it at? Close to this, here we go. The drop, the candle right here, oh, about 67.5, it dipped down. People are going, it's going to go down. It's going to crash, correction. If you go in and read all the stupid news things, like you click on the lightning bolt on TradingView, you get all, oh, you get all, here's the mines, you get all the posts. And uh, you read all these posts and you realize that nobody has any damn clue what this stuff's going to do. It's all guessing. It's all hopium. It's all speculation. And I made a post about that, too. I said, after reading these stupid posts, I realized nobody has a clue what's going to happen. People are shorting this crap. People are accumulating. It's just all over the board, man. So it's entertainment. Read these things. But do not let these idiots who post stuff. Uh, convince you to do what you do not want to do. Do what you want to do. What your gut tells you. It's your money, man. You work your, your buns off for this crap. Why uh, listen to some joker? You don't even know. Half these people who post on any of these forums even have Bitcoin. Uh, it's probably like Jim Cramer from CNBC posting crap because he's trying to manipulate you too. That's the whole point of Squawk Box and CNBC is to manipulate you into doing something so the traders can then make you... Uh, hold the bag and they dump their shares. You got to watch it. It's all propaganda um, from Seeking Alpha to all those places that post uh, financial news articles. It's just, why are they saying this? Tesla's failing. Tesla's going to go under. And then really, they're a tech, they're a tech company. They're not just a car company. I, it makes you wonder. They're out to get Musk. So you got to look at the BS. Why are they all gang piling on a certain company, a certain stock, Bitcoin? Just use your own um, critical thinking skills and just see through the BS. Anything mainstream media is all propaganda. Uh, it's been that way for a while, and now it's just been revealed in the past, what, five or 10 years that it's all BS. It's all an agenda. Anyway, let's go on. You can see some of the news stuff. 
Uh, let's see, 90% of the Bitcoin ETF inflows are still retail. That's good news. Bitcoin reclaimed 70K after initial dip from US inflation figures. I don't even know why inflation would affect Bitcoin. See, again, nobody knows. Nobody has a clue. I think what's going to happen with this having is not having, 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 it's having, uh, is supply demand. When stuff becomes scarce, price goes up. Somebody said something really really uh stuck with me it's really important they said um it's going to come a day soon when no you're not going to be able to have one bitcoin it's just going to be too expensive uh so that really sh struck it with me like oh my god this is for real so having said that i'm mining pennies a day still with bitcoin um on nice hash getting paid in bitcoin and i went over to zerg pool as well that does not accumulate as fast. I wonder if I can show you this. Hold on. Can I show you this? I don't know if you guys can see this. Let's get rid of this page. And there's Zerg pull. I'm only at 26% and I'm mining Ghost Rider. I tried, um, oh, the other one. Oh my God, I totally forget. I'm, a bra I'm brain dead here. What was the other one I did? I did Minotaur X. And, uh, Actually, well, wait, 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 wait. Oh, Minotaur X actually has more profitability. Again, it's above Ghost Rider. Shoot, do I have to switch back? But what I do, I go to Minotaur X and I try to see uh, when the latest stuff was actually presented, if it's mineable. Sometimes it takes a day. I mean, some of these coins are crappy. Like, there's a two hour. It's been two hours since the last one came out. Avian, Pulsar coin. Uh, two hours, three hours. So it's like really big gaps if we go to ghost rider boop doo 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 this is what i look at it's i'm, I'm still have my doubts about zerg i think the fees are probably way too much when i convert to bitcoin anyway so 32 minutes look it's almost every minute you're getting stuff you can mine so that's actually i don't know i'm just going with that because there's actually activity and i'm getting crap it's not much it's pennies on the dollar but it's something i just want to see if you click on wallet I just want to see if I can get this stupid percentage up and how much I can get this up per day. So I made it go up to 26%. I got to get it to 100% to get my damn payout. It's ridiculous. Oh my God, it's ridiculous. Anyway, and if we go over to nice hash, it's still moving strong. We're close to 300 bucks fiat. Who cares about that? I care about this number, 0 0.0042932 Bitcoin. So that's where we're at right now. I got a couple rigs split across. Oh my God, Zerg pull and oh uh, my God, how many on four on Nice Ash? So that's where I am at on that. So let's go back to Trading View. Enough about mining; it's boring. Uh, again, it's not; it's pathetic right now. It's pathetic, but it's not GPU mining, which thank God it's not. All right, let's go back. Oh, where are we at here? And we are at seventy-one one six. Uh, I did buy in at these low numbers of 68K, which is probably stupid in hindsight, but I don't know. What do I know? I don't know anything. I just bought in some more. There's a certain amount I want to get to, and that's why I bought in. Uh, no guts, no glory. That's what I'm doing. Entertainment only. Do not listen to any idiot like me on YouTube. Um, look at all the stuff you watch on YouTube and a lot of the political news stuff. If you, if you get in that crap, it'll drive you nuts. It makes you wonder all these people bitch and moan and they're talking about whatever side of the aisle you're on and they talk about this stuff. There's nothing, there's not a damn thing you can do about it. And I think it, it just drives me nuts. The guy, the one guy's in there complaining and he's talking to people <coughs> and he's all oh, this and this and this. And it's like, you know, I fall for it a little bit and I post, well, you know, that's all good and well and you're upset and, the, you know, government's bad. We get it. But what are you going to do about it? You're just going to sit here and rant and make YouTube money. That's what you're doing about it. You know, come on, man. We see the grift. I get it. You found a niche and it beats working for living in a cube. And that's fine. God bless you. You found your grift. Go for it. But you guys, when you watch that crap, just know it's a grift. They're just trying to milk likes, thumbs up comments engagement so they can get paid that's all it is and you may believe what they say and sometimes someone i believe it but you really have to step back and go what are they doing this it's all griff when they say give it a thumbs up for the algorithm get the message out there come on they're doing that because they want to get paid and they may seem like you're, they're your buddies but god you know god knows if you met this guy 
at a Walmart and you needed a buck, he wouldn't give it to you. He probably wouldn't say hi to you. Come on, that you know that's true. Uh, yeah, so I just had to put that out there. You just read the reality of humans and how they are and the motivation. Sit back and watch the channel. There's a couple guys like Economic or something Ninja, Economic Ninja, and this other guy who talks about news. And it's just, really? The one guy was all worked up about the solar eclipse you know, putting out National Guard, sensationalizing all the news, and it's just all for clicks and money. So just be careful with you to moderate yourself. Again, doubt but verify. Do it for entertainment. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been catching myself later. You go, why am I getting upset? That's by design. They want you to get upset. They want you to get engaged. So when you watch even stuff on financial stuff, watch it. Be careful. Doubt but verify. And the guys I have been watching, which is I, I'm not a member of their subscription service, uh, I won't even say who it is because I don't want you even to check them out. Uh, I've been watching them on YouTube and they're also on another channel. The guy pops in and talks. Very laid back. Very, very um, modest guys. And uh, that's where I've been getting some of these watch list items. Is uh, They talk about stuff. I do not go. I do not subscribe to their membership thing. It's a few hundred bucks, up to 800 bucks a year to $3.99 to $8.99 and maybe more for a full package. I haven't done it yet. Because I figure, oh man, everyone's asking for money. If these guys are really successful, why do they need to be on YouTube and posting videos? If I was really that successful, I would not be on YouTube. I would be out freaking enjoying my money. But anyway, I kind of been following these guys, doubting but verifying. And uh, they put out some shipping stock. When I say shipping, international shipping container ships. And uh, one was paying 20% dividends a month. And I bought it just out of a whim. I said, all right, I'm going to just see what's going to happen here. I bought it. It went up a couple bucks per share and I went, oh my God, in a month. And I, you know, I got the dividend and I made a couple, couple, couple bucks out of it. And I just dumped it. And it's a good feeling because he made a good comment too. Is, uh, he makes very wise comments, both of them. Is stop trying to make the home runs. Try, stop trying to make a billion bucks with a trade. Do the doubles. Get a single. Get a double. Uh, get in for a week, a couple days and get out. Get in for a day and get out. You know, and you'll make, you know. Let's say you make six to ten percent. That's good return. You know, it depends how much money you put in. And uh, also, the other comment is um, uh, you can't get rich without having money. <laughs> so you got to make money. You got to take profits to keep growing that little snowball. Uh, good advice. So I've been watching these guys, and they only put out like videos are under ten minutes, and they go through all the charts and they say they say the right things, which actually have me interested. Uh, they say it's not rock and science. There's always a pattern in each day. When money flows through the system, it's all orchestrated. And you have to know this. Once you know the game, how it works, when money flows at this time, when to trade, when not to trade, what times a day, what time of day not to trade, all this stuff. It's almost the same script every day. Money has to move from here to here to here, the exchange to the brokerage houses, blah, 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 and all this stuff. And then when do commodities go up? When do com uh, an earnings report comes out? There's all this whole orchestration, this dance. And you, once you know it, the guy even, they, they both even say, it's not that hard. It's just numbers. Remove your emotion and follow the numbers and you'll do fine. You can actually uh, subsidize your income and stop working and make enough by doing this. Not really day trading, but just picking the patterns, even in a down market. And a other good tip, they said, in a volatile market, like with crypto, volatile, you can make money. I just never stopped or shorted anything because that makes me nervous. Uh, maybe I'll do some small ones, but I have never done that. But they do that with some stocks. But uh, you can make money in a volatile market. Uh, with Bitcoin, I'm more of a hodler. Yeah, I know. I've just been holding this stuff for 2017. I've uh, been through the altcoin phase. Got sick of Litecoin, really jaded me bad, 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 bad. I got Redcoin, Pulsar, all these. And what's that other crappy thing? Raptorium. Oh, my dear God. All these, all these crap coins. And um, converted as much as I could to bitcoin i just swapped them i think i swapped whatever i could on man i with freaking raptorium i had to go to some innocuous is that a word innocuous exchange set up an account just to move it lose some money by transferring it there flip it to bitcoin lose money there on the transfer fees and move my damn bitcoin out to my wallet and more transfer fees but i was so glad to get rid of that raptorium like what the hell else am i going to do with it it was on an inode z making interest i made had like hundred bucks. I'm like, God, this is what a joke. So thank God I'm in Bitcoin. It's in Bitcoin. And I probably took that hundred bucks. It's probably not worth a thousand bucks. Yeah. Because I did that back in December or November. 
anyway, that's 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 the uh, <clears throat> that's my history on all coins, and I'm just not messing with them anymore. I'm sticking with Bitcoin. And if we go over here, you can see my watch list. I got Bitcoin at the top, and I have S F C X, which is a commodity, which is a copper mining. This is one of the the um, one of these stocks. These those two guys I watch mentioned, and I'm already up like fifteen percent on it which is not too shabby and it was up to 50 oh it's actually it was up to like 51 bucks and today was a down market so it kind of got affected a little bit uh i also watched the fidelity bitcoin etf just to get a barometer of what's happening on etf and this you know this shadows along with the bitcoin price if you do it right you can buy low uh it could go up a few bucks you can make it and don't get out you can just get out and then the pro tip I've always say in my videos is do it through your IRA and do it through your Roth IRA. That way you're not paying uh, transaction uh, taxes on your transaction, short term, long term. Only when you take for your um, IRA, if you have RMD, you're going to have all this income you made if you're successful at this. You can lose everything. So you have zero. I mean, if you're, if you're not smart about this or think it out. But uh, when you have your required minimal distributions, if you're happy enough or healthy enough to live to 72 or 5, whatever the damn age is. Uh, you have to pay tax on it. But how many people are going to live that long? I don't see myself living past 70 if I'm healthy. Come on. I don't know. Who lives that long? <laughs> Just the evil people seem to live long. You notice that? Look at all the senators and congressmen. They're all evil and they live like to 90. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, my God. The only guy that seemed to be nice that lived a long time was Clint Eastwood. He was like 99, right? Wow. Anyway. Uh, let's see. So yeah, trade in your Roth IRA that way. You're good. You're free and clear, man. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's my advice. You can't buy Bitcoin through your Roth IRA or your IRA, but you can buy, um, a Bitcoin ETF. And I know Fidelity right now is a transaction fee based free until August. So if you, I'm not paying any fees if I buy this thing in my Roth IRA, it's a win-win right now, unless it tanks. And of course I'll be like, oh crap. <laughs> I just screwed the pooch. But uh, no, it's a good thing right now. I'm not sure. Grayscale definitely was the bad one. They uh, were charging fees, and that's why people bailed on them big time. I think they moved all their money to either BlackRock, Vanguard, Schwab, or Fidelity. Because uh, again, Fidelity has no fees, no transaction fees until August. Then I think it's 25%, or I don't know. It's something ridiculous. But hopefully I'm out by then. I don't know. Uh, Exxon, another commodity based, based just like um, FCX, which is a copper mining. Exxon oil is huge right now. Uh, this thing started at 90 bucks, it's at 122. This is a cash cow and it actually pays a dividend. Wolf is something I'm watching. It is a Bitcoin miner. So after the halving in eight days, watch this puppy. It's uh, it might go, it could at least maybe go to four bucks. You know, you just don't know. It just seems to be a for them to do their mining operation, they are the most efficient of the, there's like two, I forgot the other one, but they're one of the most efficient ones out there. Again, the ones that aren't efficient at mining and uh, curbing their cost and uh, their energy costs and stuff like that are going to, are going to fail because they're not going to survive after the having because the rewards will be cut. So again, look at Wolf, keep an eye on that guy. Again, not financial advice, fools. Just use it for entertainment. Keep an eye on it. Because it could go to zero. You could lose everything, right? Then your wife will kick your butt. Then she'll divorce you and take everything that you have left. <laughs> I laugh, but it's true. <clears throat> anyway, then we got um, TLT is a bond thing I'm watching. They say once uh, the run on the, the uh, rise on oil and stuff like that is done and people will actually rotate into uh, bond reserves and stuff like this, which is TLT. So that's something like the next phase that's probably going to come once the uh, oil rush is over, and then you'll move into TLT. Gold, I just cannot bring myself to buy even a gold ETF or a gold fund. I had physical gold once. I just, I just never, what the hell am I going to do with it? I had silver for years and it stayed at 17 bucks a troy ounce for like 50 years, right? It's redonkulous. It just, I think the guy even said, one of the guys I watched said, you get more leverage buying the funds than buying the actual metal. So if you buy the funds, you get more leverage and you can play that easier than having the metal. Because what are you going to do? You're going to sell the crap. If you have a troy ounce, you have to either go to a, a pawn shop and get ripped off or mail it into someplace hoping they get it and nobody stole it on the way, you know, while it was being shipped. And then you get your money. It's stupid. Just freaking buy the stock. 
which is GOLD or an ETF or something like that. Uh, ET is an energy company as well, pipeline type stuff. Pays, a, I think, what, a 9, 8 to 9% 9 dividend. Uh, that is something to watch. That's on my watch list. I do not own it. I do not own gold. I do not own TLT. I do not own Wolf. Uh, I owe one, two, three, four. I owe the top five here. I do own them. Yeah. So ooh, we kind of dropped down to 70,885. Interesting. I don't know what this is going to do, man. I had no idea it would jump back up to 71. I thought it was going to turn down to um, Bitcoin. It was going to turn down to 65. Uh, I just don't know, man. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Uh, even some of the accounts on my YouTube channel, the subscriptions, I've been going through printing them out because I'm just so sick of the noise. It's just all the BS. And if I don't watch them in a long time, I'll just go unsubscribe, unsubscribe. Because it's just crap. You see the thumbnails pop up. It's like, you guys are just trying to get views and likes. You're just talking about nothing. And uh, it's, just, it's just boring. Why put that crap into your brain? Uh, look at the news. I mean, just go through and be careful again. You can click on the lightning bolt. You get a gist of what's happening out there by reading through some of the articles. Uh, I don't know. But if you read them four hours ago, it's like out of date already. You know, yeah, it's going to crash. It's below 70. But now we're back at the 71,000. So give me a break. Oh, look at this. Paraguay to reconsider Bitcoin mining ban. Malls selling energy to miners. Come on, Paraguay. Get your act together, man. Is that El Salvador is now all big on Bitcoin. And that may be the place to live, guys. That may be one of the richest countries in the world soon. <laughs> oh my God. Bitcoin bounces back as Grayscale ETF outflows hit new record low. All right. So the outflows, people have bailed on Grayscale. These idiots, man. I hate when you get idiots in the mix. They always screw it up for everybody else. And that's why Bitcoin, Bitcoin pulled back last week, which is good if you wanted to buy some. Yeah, that was great. But yeah, they don't know what they're doing. They shouldn't be involved. Get them out of her. Grayscale, you're done. Pound sand. All right. Uh, what's this guy? Rich dad, poor dad, author. Bitcoin price will reach 2.3 million. This guy is a grifter. This don't. This guy. Look at his history. Don't buy. Don't believe anything this guy says. He's grifting hard. Um, kind of just a used car salesman type. I I I fell for it initially years ago, but when you read about this guy's past and I don't know, he's just grifting hard. Stay away from this guy. Don't take his advice on anything. Uh, yeah, once you look at the background of people, it makes you wonder. It just makes you question everything. Uh, let's see, what do we got? 250K Bitcoin. Tim Draper says having. Isn't he from Mad Men? Draper says having. Bitcoin ETS will drive demand. Um, that's pretty high. I don't think it's going to go that high. I think there will be a supply demand issue, and I think that will definitely drive the price up. Uh, take that information for what you will. It's like when the ETFs were getting approved, the ETFs came out and they all tanked about uh, $10 per share, but they were consolidating. People, were, The money was still coming in. They're finding their legs. And then blammo, we went from uh, $32, say, for this FBTC up to, what, $61? That is, that's one hell of a rise, guys. You know, can you get that with your index fund, your S&P fund? No. Uh, yeah, the, the, the warning there, too, on the S&P, is uh remember there's a magnificent seven the top seven tech stops tech stocks that hold up the market really only two of them which is nvidia and one other one are actually making uh making gains the rest apple has not moved in three years stock price everything is just a dividend uh berkshire hathaway guy what i forgot his name the old dude who eats at mcdonald's every day uh he most 46 percent of his investments are in apple of all things why i have no idea because it hasn't gone up in two or three years uh stock wise and he's probably just getting dividends so he must really like tim cook or think tim cook's cute cute or something like that i don't know what's going on behind the scenes <laughs> warren buffett that's the guy oh my god um yeah so i don't know i don't know what's going on with that so just be careful the s p 500 i think everything's gonna come freaking crashing down like a house of cards probably around August or uh, once we get closer to the election and they'll pin it on whoever, whoever steals the white house, right? <laughs> who can steal the white house the best. And we know who's the best at it so far. Uh, we'll see if they do a repeat on that. that will be interesting. Uh, yeah. May tear the country apart, but who gives a crap? What are you going to do about it? Right? So here I go on the news. You can say all this crap, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right. But what is anybody going to do about it? Absolutely nothing. So there you go. Uh, let's see. I know you see, watch people in some posts and forums get all worked up in comment section. It's like 
you're not going to do a damn thing. You're going to go watch Netflix. You're going to you're going to play on your phone. You're going to play probably Call of Duty, and you're going to go to bed and wake up and re- rinse and repeat. Drives your crappy cube job uh, that you hate, sucks your soul out of you, and you're going to just keep doing it day after day, and you're not going to do a damn thing about it. So that's the truth. You can vote, but look up George Car- George Carlin's uh, whole skit, whole uh, comedy act on voting. It is it's just an illusion to make you think you have a, a contributing voice to this country. You don't. So, uh, yeah, watch, look at George, Car- George Carlin stuff. Uh, that's your homework assignment. So where are we at? 25 minutes on this stupid video? Okay, let's keep going. Oh, that's pretty much all I have. I was just trying to tell you what I'm doing. I'm kind of just watching Bitcoin, man. I'm not watching all coins at all. I almost bought Dogecoin at 21 cents. I, I knew better. My little, again, go with your gut. My gut said, no, man, don't do it. Don't go through this crap again. You did in 2022, 2021, whatever. And I didn't. I stayed out of it. I say, I'm sticking to my guns. I'm sticking to pure Bitcoin. And that is the name I am. That's the name of the game. That's, that's the plan I'm sticking with. You guys can do what you want to do. You do you. If, this, if that's the expression, I'm going to do Bitcoin. I wish it would pay a dividend, but it doesn't. But it is digital gold. Uh, it goes to zero. So what? Then I live and learn. Big deal. Uh, da, 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 da. What is, what's that stupid expression? Wayne Gretzky, you miss all the goals you never take. All the goals, all the shot, all the, you miss all the goals, all the shots you never take. I don't know. Something stupid like that. Yeah, if you don't take a shot, how do you know you're going to score or not? You're going to miss them all, but hey. All right, what are we at now? Tomorrow is Thursday. I don't know. I think I'm just going to sit back. I'm watching this FCX because I don't want to get greedy. Again, I want to stick with what they've been telling me. The philosophy is go for the doubles. Get a few bucks, take that money, and go yay, win, sit back. Regroup, find another stock or find the same stock to buy back in. If it dips, it may go up more. Uh, there may be other ones to chase, other energy ones, oil. So that's the name of the game is seeking doubles versus home runs. Bitcoin back in 2017, I seek the home run and it went up. Of course it went up, but you got to know when to take profits too. And that's what I learned too. That's a whole psychological thing is knowing when to take profits. My advice is go to investopedia.com and read about psychology of taking profits. Uh, you got to even just take out your core investment. Say you put in 10K and you made 20 and you made 10K. So you're up, your total value is 20,000. Take out your initial 10K and now you're playing with house money. It's gambling, guys. Come on. That's all there is to it. And then once you take out your core, your core investment, it takes a lot of stress off you. Now you're playing with the house money. And uh, yeah, good philosophy there. Check that one out. Do some Googling. Again, watch Google's results too, but uh, Investopedia is a good resource. I like that one. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Bitcoin bounces back. Why cryptos can shake off inflation fears? I don't know. I just don't know the correlation between uh, inflation, the government, the government, and Bitcoin. I don't know what's going on there. But uh, the only thing that keeps me going on Bitcoin is the having. The ETF was a big win. Uh, bringing in all the influx of money. Like, look at the volume. Oh, we go here. Let's go to FBTC. And look at, oh, it's kind of low. So the average volume is 15 million. And today was just about 9.75. Either enough people put it in, they're holding it. They're just waiting to see what happens. Uh, that's a good thing. Let's just keep put, pumping your money in. Oh, pre-market is, pre-market is about, it's up 62.18. Sweet. Good job. Let's go check it out. Ooh, it's a buy. I like this technical stuff, man, on TradingView. I have the desktop version. Get it. Play with it. If you don't like it, eh, whatever. But it's, just take, your, take a couple hours and play with it and learn about it. This is really cool. You click on more technicals. Dude, dude look at this stuff. This is gold, big daddies. There has never been a greater time to educate yourself on how to do all this stuff. Uh, yeah. There we go. Let's, go. Let's get out of this. And what else do we got going on? Yeah, try it. Ah, yeah, you guys can read it. I'm not going to bore you with it. All right. So what else do we have? Um, YouTube. Uh, what are we doing with YouTube? I am not monetized on YouTube. I'm sorry if you guys see commercials on this crap. I really hate YouTube because they, uh, they definitely abuse the content creators. The amount of time to do this stuff. And post it, it takes some time out of your day. I enjoy just kind of putting BS out there. 
kind of keep it real. You, a lot of people may not agree with what I say, but who gives a crap? You guys can all make your own channels too, and I'll watch them. I, I don't care. I like to see opposing or additional opinions and get ideas from others because I, I know I don't know what I don't know, and I want to hear other people's advice on what to do. Again, the two guys I do watch, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, they've been spot on uh, about everything, even the con cons I can't even I can't even say the word. Uh, when Bitcoin consolidated at about the 68, 67,000 price range uh, last week, and it would be a couple of weeks, they said, for it to hover there, and it's been that way. I went, man, these guys got it, and they would write about the ones on the right on my watch list. I'm thinking, these guys have made me some money, and I'm not even a member of their subscription service, which I don't think I'm, I don't know. I don't, I'm going to keep going, because I don't know what the membership may buy me in a way other than more information that I may not completely understand more technicals and i don't know if i can handle the technicals i don't know if i'm that smart uh, to be honest i might get all this information go what the hell do i do with this uh i don't know that's where i'm at if it works out if i do go that route i'll let you know but i have not gone there yet right now i'm just an independent watching everyone watching mainly those two dudes and just going hey all right let me see if these guys are bsers or if they're for real and so far they've been legit uh yeah it's amazing that they actually take the time and put that information out all right what else that's enough about that i'm not sponsored like i said i'm just going telling you what i'm doing and who i'm watching and i weeded out what is it got rid of the the chaff from the wheat and now I'm trying to find and kind of prune my watch list just to get information that is actually useful to me because the less i have to work and i can make money doing this the happier i'm gonna be <laughs> oh my god i tell you let's let's switch topics uh, I've been watching these. Also, I watch these fighter pilots on um, former fighter pilots on uh, YouTube as well. And uh, it's funny to hear them say the one lady, she retired. She just quit the Air Force because she didn't want the bullshit anymore. Right. I guess they were forcing stuff on them. You know what I mean? Uh, medicinal stuff. And she said, I'm out. And then she didn't go commercial. She said, no, I'm not going to work for anybody else. I don't want to have to worry about somebody calling me saying you got to come to work or this, that, blah, 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 blah. She just went and started her own type of business, online training or online courses. Very smart. And because she just said, I know I don't want to work for somebody else. And then the other two guys said the same thing. It's just so much better to be, I hate the word entrepreneur, but to do your own thing. Because sometimes you cannot make money and you may have to go get a job. But uh, that's a cool philosophy. It is always better to be your own boss. It would be a little stressful. But when you don't have anyone calling you, and depending, you know, expecting you to be there at this time. And you're kind of just the, uh, the bus boy, you know, showing up to work. And uh, you're never in control because you're, you're just a cog. You're just a peon. It just sucks after a while. It, it does drain on your psychology, your psyche, psychology, your psyche and your soul. Um, but again, some people don't have it in them or they don't have the confidence to go do their own thing or they just don't have the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the aptitude to do it. And that, that's just the way it is. Some people do, and I just encourage people to go do it and uh, try, try a side hustle first and get, I hate that word, try starting what they want to do. And once you start making enough money, then you cut, you cut your mainstream of income out. Or if you're making enough money doing this, like this trading stuff or Bitcoin, I don't know. It could be life-changing wealth. This may be the time in history when things look so bleak that you can actually make enough money for your family long-term. Uh, I don't know. This country's not looking too hot right now. But if you can make money on these volatile times, why not? Why not educate yourself? <laughs> there has never been a better time, like with TradingView and all this stuff out there, to learn how to do this Investopedia, uh, certain YouTube people, not every YouTube person, because uh, you got to watch. You may get some bad information. Uh, but yeah, why not go educate yourself? Instead of watching um, stupid political YouTubers, uh, other crap that doesn't matter, uh, just go and. Watch educational stuff like how to do this stuff, how to read these charts, you know, based on history. But look at the grift too. Some guys are grifting hard and they're just saying stuff to get you to subscribe to something or buy their course. And whenever someone's pushing a course, I get red flags go up. So watch that. Uh, what you find is the reason they're making money is because they're selling courses for 800 bucks online and they're not really making money trading or whatever else the crap they're pushing. So you got to be careful of that. Just be mindful. Um, what else is going on? Oh my God. I still like talking about the dating. Let's switch topics. Ready? We're going to get whiplash. Again, in the last video I mentioned, young men, please do not get married and uh, do not date in the West. I'm sorry. I hate to say it. I've been watching these videos. The entitlement, the um, 
lack of accountability of today's Western woman is amazing. They expect everything. They have all this criteria for men. And yet when a man says, well, you know, no tattoos, no piercings, uh, you know, be in shape. And then, oh my God, mean, mean, toxic, toxic. But a woman can have six foot two, six figures, you know, uh, what else? Uh, six pack abs, stuff like this. And, but it's just funny. And then one, one video I watched today, the, the girls like, oh, I had a horrible day. He was 5'10", but he said he was six foot. And what's funny, and she even says, it took me an hour. I got all made up just to go meet him. It's like, well, wait a minute. You're false advertising as well because you're putting on makeup. Because it's funny. Why do women put on makeup? They're basically selling a lie. But when you see a woman without makeup, oh my God, look at, um, look up Jennifer Lopez without makeup. It's like, holy crap. It's almost selling a lie. And so women pull this crap on men. They want men to be perfect, blah, blah, blah. But when a guy says the same thing in reverse, oh my God, it's toxic. It's just funny, man. I'm sorry. If you can go, oh my, I don't know where you would go. Um, if you're going to go overseas and that stuff, they call it passport bros, you got to get in shape. You got you to gotta get your game up here first. So just don't go over there like a fat, rolly, slobby person or a skinny fat guy or a neck beard or something like that. Do the work here. Get in shape. Eat right. Stop eating sugar. Stop eating a fast food. Just eat normal. You'll feel better too. It's, oh, you don't want to eat steak and green beans and potatoes. Oh, well, sucks to be you. Just start eating clean and walking and get in shape. And then if you want, get out of here. You go over there with a six pack and some muscles. You don't have to be the greatest looking guy, but if you're in shape physically, you're going you're gonna to have your uh, pick over there. It's going to be competition, but if you're a fat slob and you go over there, it's not going to go well for you. It's going to be the same as here, you know? Just get yourself, make yourself a better person, but do not. Do not. I don't know. I would not date in the West. There was a guy from Berkeley, of all places, professor, look it up. It was like last month. He, taught, he told his class, and it went viral. He told the men, I would not date here. Anyone in the San Francisco Bay Area, I would not. And his wife is actually, I think... Um, Oh my God, Southeast Asian. I can't remember exactly. Really good looking girl. Probably has traditional values. Uh, not westernized quite yet. But uh, he said the men do not date here. Go somewhere else. And he's just, he's just warning men because you will be reamed through the family law system or falsely accused of something and their career ruined. And they just kind of make crap up. If you will reject a Western woman, oh my God, they'll come after you scorned woman and they'll just do everything to destroy you and make up lies you got to be careful and I'm, I'm not hyper being hyper, hyper hyper hyperbolic it's true you read all the reports out there it's bad man it's bad you might be better just cutting off your wanker and <laughs> protecting yourself oh yeah. but anyway it's funny he brought his wife over here and he's in berkeley and i hate that I, he he's right and all but she, he's got to be careful because she's going to start hanging out with western women become um westernized and he might have his hands full he might lose everything in a few years so he might have wanted to stay overseas i think that was probably the move he should have stayed overseas because he brought her back to the um the den of vipers and she may be uh yeah she, yeah <laughs> he may have his hands full in a few years where she's taken all his berkeley money and his his retirement and he's like uh left working as a barista down in uh outside the berkeley campus but I don't know. It's just funny. Watch some of those videos. They're entertaining. But it is a, um, it is a, uh, what is the saying? It is a, it, it is a cautionary tale. And it's a lot of truth to it. And um, why, is, why is young men are not dating? And it's smart. Good for them. Focus on making a better version of yourself. The uh, legal system, the family law system is geared against you. And this country is in trouble. But if you can look out for yourself, get in shape. Focus on your career. Make as much as you can. Stay away from boss babes, boss girls at work. If you cannot, if you can choose not to work or avoid working with a woman, that is even better too, because that'll just get you in trouble as well. It's just toxic. Uh, yeah, stay away. Do not go into a room alone with a woman at work. Do not go to lunch or social events. If you can at all, stay away from all that stuff where they can make up accusations against you. Almost best to keep your mouth shut, look down. And just be submissive and get your money and get the hell out at the end of the day. And I don't know, there was a story too where the guy did avoid everyone and then they tried to still go after him. And it's just like, are you kidding me? You just can't win sometimes. That's why if you can work remote, that's a win as well. You get you out of the office away from these toxic boss babes as well. 
Yeah. So even companies now, I think, are not hiring women because they know even women aren't hiring women because they know the toxicity that comes into the office. Again, it's not all women, but again, it's enough to raise concerns and uh, productivity goes down. It's just not good. It's just not good all around. So I don't know. Something's got to give like with housing prices and everything. Something's got to give and it's going to happen soon. All right. That is all I got. Another rant. 40 minutes. Let's see. Yeah. A lot of different information. It's just, uh, I don't know. You guys take away from it what you will. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Sorry about 40 minutes, but eh, whatever. Go forth, trade Bitcoin, make some money. Let's hope we all get some generational wealth out of this. If we all go broke, well, we'll make a, we'll, I don't know, make a Discord channel. We can all cry in our soup, right? All right, I'm out. Bye.